the technical bit, using redirects. As mentioned, the big problem with the method described in the previous video is that it doesn't allow you to control for every single confounding variable. While you might run lots of tests with very similar pages, they are still different pages, and they might still succeed or fail based on other factors. While you can use larger groups to minimize this effect, it's still ultimately going to mean basing your decisions on estimated guesses. And there are limits to just how many pages you can use in a split A-B test. If you're going to be changing the results across hundreds of pages on your site, then this will involve a lot of work. What's more is that you will be potentially hurting your site in a big way if the change proves to be a mistake. The whole point of A-B testing is to conduct the experiment in a controlled manner. So what can you do? One answer is to use a redirect, which has different and unique pros and cons. A redirect simply means that you're going to send visitors to a different version of the website. This will use a number of different methods, more in a moment, but one of the simplest is the HTML redirect. The browser will read this code and will then follow it to the new page. If you use this method, then as soon as a visitor lands on a web page, there will be a short pause and then they will be sent to the new web page. Of course, this version of a split test also has its limitations. After all, there's no way for Google to alter its ranking depending on which page performs best. That's because the two versions of the page are one and the same as far as Google is concerned, meaning that they will only rank once depending on which version Google took into account. So how can this be used to monitor your SEO performance? This is useful for measuring a host of factors that will impact on your SEO. That means things like bounce rates, things like CTR, click-through rate, and more. While this might not directly affect your ranking, seeing what page design or content is best for audience retention will have a big effect on your ranking, so this can be just as useful. Which type should you use? The answer is, of course, both, if you have the time. The more data you collect, the smarter decisions your business will make, and the more likely you are to see performance boosts. Better redirects. The redirect used above will work as described to send a user directly to a different website. This way, they can experience a temporary alternative to your main page without hurting the appearance of that page. Of course, what we really want to do, though, is to ensure that the page only loads for half of the visitors. That's where we need to get a little savvier. What's more is that we want Google to get sent to the new page as well. As it is, 100% of our visitors are being sent to the new page, and Google spiders will recognize that the page is a redirect and not a regular page. So why would it rank as normal? Instead, you'd be better off using a PHP redirect. PHP stands for PHP Hypertext Preprocessor. And yes, that means that it has its own name in the acronym, which is extremely confusing. PHP is a form of scripting language that runs on the server rather than in the browser. Your website is stored on a server somewhere, which is essentially a large computer, and the HTML code is then sent to and interpreted by a browser each time someone types in the correct URL. Because PHP runs on the server, that means that it runs before the browser ever sees it. In turn, that means that the page will appear in the browser fully formed. You can redirect in PHP by creating a PHP file with the name of your page and then inserting the following text. This will now redirect visitors to the new location, and it will do so in a way that is impossible for anyone to detect. Even if they were to view source, the source they'd see would be the HTML for the new page. The next thing we need to do is to ensure that only half of the visitors are sent to the new page, and we can do this by randomly redirecting those visitors. What this does is to choose a random number between 1 and 2, and if the number is 1, then it sends the visitor to the new page. If not, they stay where they are. This works by using a timer to choose the number, hence the need for the micro time part. You don't really need to know how this works, though, only that it does work. Using include. While this method of redirecting visitors can be effective, it still isn't quite perfect. You still have two different types of web pages, which could potentially confuse results. The URL in the address bar will be different, for example, which could result in action from Google, more on this in a bit, and which could confuse your users. Another option then is to use an include file. This basically means that the page will populate itself with content from another page, allowing a blank template to become your new version of the page. In this version, you will create two HTML pages that only contain the elements that are different. 
This works particularly well if you are changing something about the text, for instance. Save these as version 1.htm and version 2.html. Then use the following code on the main page. Place this where on your page you want the difference to show. Of course, this becomes a little harder to track and it won't be suitable for every single option, but you can always create two full page include files and have them load instead. Finally, you can also include what is known as a 301 direct, which you'll achieve by using your HT access file available through your file manager. Just open it up and add the line. As you can see, there are plenty of options, but by understanding how redirects work and how to use them if you should decide to, you'll be able to employ the full range of strategies. More use for redirects. There are more ways that redirects can be useful and more reasons that you should familiarize yourself with the technique. For example, this is also by far the most useful option for measuring other metrics, such as your conversions and your profits if you have a sales page, for example. In other words, if it's not ranking that you're testing for, then you can happily use the redirect method and then see whether this impacts on the way that users engage with your site. We'll talk more about this later in the training. Redirects using the include method can also be a better way to run the matched pages test. Rather than manually change half of the pages on your site or a large bunch of pages in your experimental group, you can use the include file in order to make the change once and then insert it into half the pages on your site. That in turn means you'll be able to quickly reverse your efforts as well or even run entirely new tests by changing text in just one document. Finally, a redirect can be a useful way of testing changes using the previous method, but without permanently altering your site.